Hello guys, welcome. In this video I'm going to be going through my recent doublet build with you. This is a 66 foot doublet. Now because I have an aluminium mast, you'll actually see very shortly that I've had to make some custom standoffs. And these are just, I think these are actually ABS, just 32mm waste pipe. So, here's the setup for you. 66 foot doublet, 13.25 meters of ladder line, a QRO one to one choke, and approximately 1.5 meters of coax into an AT4K, Acom 1000, and into the 590. Right, so back to these standoffs. Using a 44mm hole saw, and that just puts the radius on them. And what I'll do is I'll actually cable tie these to the mast. Now I seem to have lost my uh, pipe cutting tool, so just use the bandsaw and that was just to make them all an even length. Very hand tool is the handy tool is the bandsaw. Now we need two holes perpendicular to each other. So this bigger drill, this is for holding the standoff to the mast itself. And on the other hand, there is a smaller drill. And this is actually for uh, holding on the open wire spreader. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to put a notch on these on one end, on the other end. These are the spreaders themselves, really excellent, made by DX wire, 38mm spaced. And this this pipe is really easily um, filed. It's just a slight notch is all it needs. Use the mess, but I did clean up at the end, I promise. Now, at the top of the mast, I actually need a way to terminate the uh, open wire feeder. So I'm just using a project box here with the jumper uh, wires going through it. These are stainless steel M6 threaded rods that I've just cut to size. I've used all stainless steel hardware on this, stainless steel eye bolts. Now I've used an extra pair of these tube clamps, that's just so it stands a bit further away from the mast. Because ideally we want at least two times the width of the ladder line. Now I just did this by eye, there was not really any measurements, but it seemed to work out okay. This probably this is probably the single piece of of the antenna that took me the longest to put together. Probably took me an hour and a half, couple of hours. Just till I thought about it and got it done. So there you go, there's our standoff piece. Now just make sure everything gets tightened up, there's just cap screws here, top and bottom. And there's little uh, solder tabs, and all we're going to use is our DX10 wire, there's little jumpers through it. That just maintains the open wire feeder distance just to the top. Just cut them to final size. Now this is a new soldering iron, it was less than £40, it's a Yahua, I think it's called. It's it's a great bit of kit, and it was less than £40 as I said. Loads of heat in it. There we go. Right, now we need to build our one-to-one -one choke. This is a QRO choke, high power. These are two cores of FT2043, just super glued together and taped. 
put them into a V block and then just leave them for a couple of hours. Now, once the uh, the glue had set, I need to actually put 10 turns of this. This is RG400. This is a high power coax. But I used some PVC wire just to determine the, the approximate length of coax I needed because I don't have too much of it and I didn't want to waste it. So you just cable tie one end on, a couple of cable ties, zip ties. And then we can start winding our coax once we've done that and then just cable tie the other tail before trimming to size and then exposing the uh, inner and outer. Now I do wish this project box was slightly bigger, so I've put an SO239 in it, got a couple of M4 bolts, just tightening these up. I do put a little vent hole in this later. Now this RG400 is quite hard to uh, get the shield off, it's double shielded. PTFE dielectric, so it can handle a lot of power. Double braided this thing. Now, you can see how short the ends are, that's why I wish the project box was just a little bit bigger. But we managed to snugly fit it in there. Again, there's solder tabs on one end. That's our finished choke balance. And yeah, yeah, I've got that soldered and I've got yeah, some liquid electrical yeah. tape and as I mentioned, yeah, a little vent hole that I put in the bottom of it. Well, we would have entirely potted it. But it, it's not too bad for a homebrew effort. Now, last time that we're actually going to take down the off-centre fed. Now, this antenna's actually served me well over, a, over, I think, a couple of years anyway. But it's nice to get a change. This is my 10 metre mast made by MM0CUG up in Aberdeen and I've had this I think since 2016. Really easy to take up and down, it's a, it's a crank down. He actually made this custom for me. He just needed to know the size of the eaves and the height to the eaves and he made that bracket to suit. So taking off the short leg and then the long leg, which was a tight squeeze in the garden. And actually this all just goes in the bucket. Open up the gates and then let's crank down our mast. Now we can start working on it. Removing all these cable ties. Uh, this is RG213. It's been on this mast since it went up and it's lasted very well. As long as you seal your coax connections at the end, it'll last you for years. And there we go. There's our M0 CVO off center fed. Little eye bolt which I took off the top, that was a strain relief previously used. There's our standoff. Fit that on to the end. Now we can start fitting our standoffs, waste pipe standoffs. These took a little bit of fettling, but again, easily filed. I ended up spacing these at 600 millimetres, 0.6 of a metre, so two foot. And that just happened to be 
because the ladder line they have spacing at 300 millimeters, so it's every second spacer. So I ended up spacing these out. Now here's that open wire feeder. I just even one end off. I need to put ring connectors on it. There we go, crimp them on. And I also solder them using the flame for quickness. There we go, and finished off with some glue lined heat shrinks, so that'll, that'll give it some nice weatherproofing. Yeah, using a 10mm spanner, managed to find one, connecting up our, our feeder. This, this took a little while to do this, I think it took over an hour to get this run down the pole, doing it for the first time. Certainly when I come to do it again and replace these for something UV resistant, it, it'll be much quicker and I'll be much better prepared. Now I've faced these away from the prevailing winds so they shouldn't get too much battering. Now I thought at this point I better connect up my antenna wire, so 10 metres on each side. Some big chunky cable ties as strain relief. Then we can start hoisting. I usually service this mast about once a year, get the get it down and get all the rope all re-greased. Now just tying off the antenna wires just crudely. So that's one end of the garden. And the other end, I do apologise for the camera shake. I should have had a little bit of step ladders, but I've got my hand on the car and, and, the, and the camera's balanced on the car, so it's getting a bit of vibration. So I just have a little pulley attached to a bit 2x2 two two attached to the fence. And I've actually looked at the distance that it is away from the, the general public and we have no worries about um, the EMF thing. This, this job took me a little bit of a while putting up the ladder line and what I didn't show you in the video was initially I used 11 and a bit metres of ladder line and I couldn't tune a lot of the bands but I'll touch that on the, the lessons learned at the end I just use some scotch pads fuck them on now this uh, grassy stuff here I needed to get this out the road because behind here we're going to put on our one to one choke that we made earlier just tie that stuff up and out of the way. Now it's nice to hide it behind here because it just, just to say, it just keeps it out of the road. Drilled into the wall here, which was incredibly hard. As you can see, that is granite on the bottom here, really hard to, to drill into, but I managed to just get enough. And I put two holes in it, one in each corner. There's no strain on this anyway. And these project boxes actually have through holes, which is really good. That's how our choke now fitted. See the four outer holes? Then we just put the lid on. And then I actually needed to cut into the feeder. This is Messi and Poloni Ultraflex 7. And I'm using one of the Messi and Poloni connectors. Just finishing that off, putting that in there. Now I do reroute this ladder line, it does attach to the wall, the proper length, the 13.25 metres. 
Now it was getting dark at this point. So this was actually a couple of days later, once I got the ladder line, line sorted out. So there we go, there's our antenna. And here is the, uh, the readings from the rig expert. So as I say, every band tuned 80 through 10, but with the exception of 17. Now I wish it was 30 that didn't tune, um, because 30 did come in. But it'd be nice to get 17 back. And then just doing an SWR sweep, although it doesn't mean too much. I just thought I'd put it in there and then you could see where the dips are. And then into the shack, it's all working. Palstar into the ACOM or ACOM feeding that. We've got my uh, SDR play, RSPDX, SDR console software for receiving. And then we're using the Kenwood TS590 for transmit. And we've got a few contacts in the log there. And this morning we got Brian in there. Well done, guys, if you're still here after watching all of that. Now, I just want to give some initial thoughts on the doublet. Um, was it worth doing? Yes. Um, it took a lot of planning and it really couldn't have been possible without the very kind long-term loan of that lovely Palstar AT4K. Now, if you've been around um, uh, watching ham radio videos on YouTube, you should have recognised that tuner. So if you do recognise that tuner, comment below where you've, where you've seen it. So thank you very much to that gentleman for loaning me that. Now, uh, what I didn't show in the video was um, the length of the ladder line is absolutely critical. Um, I actually had to extend it somewhat. Initially, it was only 11.7 metres. And it would only tune on about half the bands. Um, I then extended it to 16.5 metres, where it tuned on most of the bands. And I kept on trimming, 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 um, until I got down to the 13.25 metre length. And that was the best, sort of the, 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 sort of the happy medium. Of where I could get it um, to work on all bands again I, I can't get 17 uh, working so I'd like to know your thoughts um, Chuck KK6USY he kindly shown me a, a document by DX Engineering and they recommend odd uh, odd eight wavelengths so um, uh, uh, one eighths three eighths five eighths and so on and so on I did initially try that didn't quite work out for me um, obviously the feeder I'm using is, is DX10 wire, DX commander, and I'm using these DX wire um, uh, spreaders, the 38 millimeter spacing between them, which should be a little bit less lossy than 300 ohms, certainly, probably not much, a little bit less lossy than 450, but there won't be much in it. So, I mean, only time's going to tell uh, what I'm going to think about this. Uh, the antenna wire, I'd probably like to upgrade. I'm just using cheap PVC coated wire. Maybe put up some of that nice Kevlar coated stuff because it almost it almost act as a bit of a a, a guy wire as well um, on, on the mast. I might be able to get the mast just a little bit higher too. Uh, that's something else. But yeah, it's been it's been really good, and it's it's probably one of these antennas that it's it's not much of a compromise. Um, but I think I'm getting a lot um, Again, the, the AT4K I wouldn't be able to run QRO on that If I didn't have that The antenna seems to be a little bit quieter On receive than my off-centre fed Again, let me know if you've you, You've heard the, sa the same And when I used to just receive On 80 with the, the off-centre fed It was much more noisier Signals were down Signals are definitely louder And the noise is down uh, on the doublet so that's that's quite interesting, right, guys? So there you are, and I, I should give a big also a big thanks to Brian zero three X D J. Um, so I worked Brian this morning on twenty meters CW. I sent him a quick email. Um, I actually did that yesterday, but the bands were completely dead. He replied back saying the bands are dead. So this morning, um, about quarter to eight uh, UK local time, sent him a quick email, and I was calling CQ on twenty meters. I worked the German station. And as soon as I finished with that German station, Brian then called me. So that was fantastic. So he received me 559 over in ZL and he was about 539 with me. So absolutely fantastic. And that, you know, gives me some confidence, but at least the, the doublet is working and it's certainly not any worse than the off-centre fed. Right, guys, that's it for now. Um, if you're not subscribed, please do so because I'm sure I'm going to have further updates on the antenna. OK, guys, 73 for now.